Welcome back to Master Glass. This is a special episode. I wouldn't say very special, but kind of special. I'm gonna show you how I put together an episode of Master Glass. What is the thought between a cocktail and why we put it on the show? We don't just usually take random cocktails and throw them on the show. I typically go through a calendar and I see what's the next holiday, what's the next festivity. And then in conjunction with that, I like to launch a cocktail on that week. So as I was going through the calendar, it's November now, uh, November 2020, as I was going through the calendar, I noticed that November 30th is Mark Twain's birthday. Now, Mark Twain and Nevada have a very special connection. I know every city likes to associate themselves with Mark Twain because he was a larger than life character, but Nevada and Mark Twain really have a special bond. Um, so now I have a person, I have a theme, I know I want Mark Twain, to be something I want to make a cocktail about. And then I picked up a, a book. I, I picked up the second, the second edition of Dale DeGroff's The Craft of the Cocktail. I have the first edition. I always keep it displayed in, my, in the back. And uh, in it, on page 158, what you know, he has a cocktail called the Mark Twain Cocktail. And the history behind it is very neat because Mark Twain in 1875, sorry, in 1874, wrote a letter to his wife, Olivia, basically saying, Livy, please make sure that when I get home in the bathroom, I can have a bottle of scotch, a lemon, some sugar and Angostura bitters. So along with that letter that he wrote to his wife, Livy, this cocktail was born, so I'm gonna make it. So first off, we're gonna want to chill a glass. Just like that. I like to give it a little stir just to promote ice and cold in every area of the glass before leaving it like that. I'm gonna move the book over here. And so the first ingredient that it calls for is one and a half ounces of scotch whiskey. Now, Scotch whiskey, of course, can be a generic term for all whiskey made in Scotland. Some of them are single malts, some of them are blends. I'm gonna use a blend as I believe this is probably what was being used. So this is a blended Scotch whiskey, Dewar's 12. And once again, it calls for, what did I just say? One and a half ounces, which is 45 mils. Just like that. Okay, the next ingredient he says is three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice. Let's do that. Take this lemon right here. As I've done before, before I squeeze the lemon, I'm gonna take a peel off of it. We're gonna save that for garnish. There's no garnish listed, so we're gonna just put one. Why? Because we have it and it's free. We're gonna need this lemon anyway. So three quarters of an ounce. Also throw that in the shaker right there. Okay, what was the next ingredient? Three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. As you know, simple syrup is equal parts of water and sugar. Sometimes you double it up, but when it doesn't specify, that means it's just equal parts. And by doubling up, I mean you double up the sugar, so you make it more sweet. But in this case, we're using what is called a 50-50 simple syrup. And then the last ingredient is two dashes of Angostura bitters, which I have in here. Okay, so now it's time to garnish. What am I gonna do here? I have these handy dandy scissors. I will leave the link on the bottom. I don't even know what they're called. I call them handy dandy. They're just zigzag scissors. And I'm gonna take the garnish just to make it a little bit more fancy. This is not a requirement. 
And I know every time I make an episode where I talk about garnish, I get a lot of garnish haters on the uh, comments. And that's fine. If you don't want to do it, just don't do it. Um, and I am just basically cutting this garnish. Little OCD, get the lemon out of the way. And I just cut this garnish with a little lemon um, zigzag to it and just like that. And there you have it, directly from Dale DeGroff's Craft of the Cocktail, second and revised edition, the Mark Twain cocktail. Okay, so let's give this a try. Lovely, absolutely lovely. Mm. Just so well-rounded, it's almost got this interesting orange almondy um, uh, flavor to it along with these really nice puckery citrus notes. Um, yeah, I would never guess the ingredients inside this cocktail. Uh, I'm not getting scotch. I'm just getting a very well-rounded, orangey, citrusy, lovely cocktail with a little bit of almond notes. This is how I put together a show on Master Glass, and this is how I recommend you put together an event at your house. If there's a tie-in you can find, that's the cocktail. What was the tie-in today? Well, I went on the internet. Mark Twain's birthday is coming. Um, my great friend and respectable colleague, the godfather of the cocktail revival, Dale DeGroff, just published his book. In the book, there's an 1874 recipe of a Mark Twain cocktail. What an amazing tie-in. So everything just kind of came together. Now, a couple of other things. On the description below, I'm going to put in our link to our Patreon and all the tools that I use. Now, I could just imagine myself sipping on this cocktail if I were Mark Twain, larger than life character, taking a sip, talking to Olivia, my wife, maybe smoking a cigar, um, and just enjoying life while writing some of the best literature we've ever seen. By the way, speaking of cigars, I have been thinking of adding a section of Master Your Glass with some cigars and spirits. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Should Master Your Glass add another segment with cigars and spirits? And uh, I would love to hear from you. Um, again, that puts us in the book. Please come back to Master Your Glass. Hit like, subscribe, and hit that bell if you like this episode and come back for more expert instruction for everyday consumption.